nine and a half years ago, I saw one of my grandchildren being born. First time I'd ever seen a child being born. My son-in-law knocked on the door about 1 a.m. said, the baby's coming. He said, have you called the midwife? He says, yes, yes, she's bringing a couple friends. So we called up a couple friends. Well, there was a party. Must have been eight or more people there. Ten. For four hours, our daughter alternately screamed, yelped like she was in horrible pain, and then beamed like she was in heaven for a while. Finally, after about six o'clock in the morning, her firstborn, who was six years old, says, I see the head, I see the head. I saw the, heard the first yowl of a brand new baby. I said a little prayer for the world. I hope all the little children live a long, long time. This every little boy, little girl. Hope they'll learn to laugh at the way some precious old words do seem to change. Cause that's what life is all about. To arrange and rearrange and rearrange. <coughs> Sometimes I wake in the middle of the night and rub my aching old eyes. Is that a voice from inside my head or does it come down from the skies? There's a time to laugh, but there's a time to weep. The time to make a big change, wake up your bum, the time has come to rearrange and rearrange and rearrange. Oh, hey, oh, 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 Early in the morning, I'm a gathering the sap and I say a little prayer for the maple. Like old Mama Quad, that's a big tree, has four taps in it. Old Mama Quad on the northwest slope, I'll protect it just as long as I'm able. She gives more sap year after year than any other single tree. We'll bring on the pancakes, here's to Mama Quad, and may she live for another century. May she live, may she live for another century. Oh, okay, oh, my. may she live for another century. Then, I have to tell you, this thank you, visit. Our philosophic type relatives says, I'm not sure if I agree with that song. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest change in this world will be when we don't have to keep changing all the time. We get a more stable world. That's what we need. I had a verse for her. Maybe the biggest change will come when we don't have to change much at all. When maniacs holler, grow, 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 we can choose to stay small. The key word may be little, we only have to change a little bit. Drink a little drink, eat a little food, and only have to shit a little shit. <laughs> I have to shoot a little shit. Hey, scared? Oh, okay. Oh, God. Then I only have to shoot one more time. Oh, okay. Oh, God. I only have to shoot a little shit. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Then I only have to shoot a little shit. Now, some places I don't sing this song. <laughs> in a school, I don't want to get the teacher or the principal in trouble. But I sang in the synagogue last Sunday, Sunday. The batch of kids sitting up, I told them, kids, you know, in home you've been told, you will not say that word in this house. Well, you're not in that house right now. <laughs> and we're trying to explore the future of the world. Early in the morning when you see the sun, say a little prayer for the world. Hope all the little children live a long, long time. This here for little boy, little girl. Hope they learn to laugh at the way some wicked old words do seem to change. Cause that's what life is all about. To arrange and rearrange and rearrange. Once more. We arrange and rearrange and rearrange.
Record I made for Columbia in the 1960s. I said, Did I ever play that fast? I can't possibly have played that fast. They must have speeded it up. finger doesn't uh, fray as fast as my middle finger does. <laughs> uh, my middle finger's got a very weak fingernail. It tears all the time. And just this morning, I figured the solution. I'm going to have to get me a banjo with gut strings. Because I, there's a lot of, I can't fray much. Uh, with picks on, I don't do a good job. And with back of my middle fingernail, it just collapses. Or the back of my first finger, my nail just goes. I've got weak fingernails. So I'm going to get me a, a gut string banjo. Yeah, you know that Jello dime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had actually I had a gut string banjo with no frets on it. Frank Prophet made it for me once. Fifty dollars he charged, in 1964. <coughs> uh, he had a possum hide on a gourd. No, it wasn't a gourd. It was a homemade wooden base. Right. Yeah. Put a possum hide on it. But that's that. Now, you're next. <laughs> Does anyone want to ask me a question or maybe anything specific? I hope I can break something down. I'm not the best at that. I just play and sing, I guess. And does anybody have any? What kind of question do <coughs> you want? How about, so, how about uh, the uh, mm -hmm. Rise on the Rooster Crows? How you. Uh, okay. How you pick that? That's an interesting The prelude, what I'm thinking about is... Uh, there's a prelude to this song. Oh, right? Right? And, but, it, but it's, uh, it's uh, Sweet Bunch of Days. But we'll just play the Rise of the Rooster Crows. <laughs> so much about Oh, the gospel children gonna wear them out Gonna wear them up beyond the window Put on the robe Gonna put on my golden shoes I'll rise when the rooster crows Oh, I'll rise when the rooster crows I'm going back south where the sun shines hot Way down where the shore can go Said it wouldn't for riches. I'll marry some big gal that can't wear my bitches. I'll rise when the rooster crows. Oh, I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'm going back south where the sun shines hot. We down where the sugar cane grows. Now what you gonna do when the women all dead? 
sat in the corner with a hung down head. If I had to marry, said I wouldn't for riches. I'll marry that gal that can't wear my riches. I'll rise when the rooster crows. Oh, I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'd run back south where the sun shines hot and down where the children can go. Now we'll have apple cider all the fall. Then we'll all go down to the ball. Where the ducks shoot a backer and the duke sees wine, the goose drinks wine, and the old hen cackles in the rooster keep time. I'll rise when the rooster crows. Oh, I'll rise when the rooster crows. Eyes are going back south where the sun shines hot and down where the sugar cane grows. Anybody want to ask him to Please. slow down on some part? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing up here? What, you gonna do? what am I doing? Well, that was your good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, here, here. We'll lead it out with a... It comes when I'm playing. That's the best way I can tell you my style. They just, they just all mix up. So there's several styles that I'm putting in there. It's uh, The song is conducive. Certain of these tunes, the emotion of them to me, it just, it just drives my styles. And I'll mix them in, in and out and in and out, you know. But... Uh, but there's a lead on what I'm doing is an old two finger style, which is the first way I learned to play. And there's see you're doing some pinches. That's right. He's, he's not going with the back of his finger just yeah. once. It's all the <laughs> Let me sit there, Pete. This chair is a cockeyed low. Let me... <laughs> Boy, that is a low chair. I don't think that's going to suit you long-legged. But it's a type of tune, you know, as you're getting into singing these things, uh, it's almost like an emotional thing. I, it's hard for me to, you know, I'll, I'll start claw hammering, I'll, I'll play up, you know. And I'll just change my styles through. It's hard for me. I, I'm not what you want to What you're trying to explain about when you do your pinches and how you're, you're okay. getting that in. And I'm leading with the thumb. Of course, the the old thumb string or the fifth string, I go back up to it occasionally where it fits in rhythmically. But I'm doing brushes. But then I'll change the brush, you see, into a into a pinch. That's the way I, when I'm playing, I'm thinking of the melody and the, and the song and the syllables of the words, and those syllables to me are what this hand is doing. That's how my style, you know, I tell people, I said, that's your voice box, your tongue, and your lips right there. And you pretty much you always lead with your thumb, don't you? At that point, I do, you know. Is that your, your finger never left that first string, did it? Your index finger, did it? Um, it don't. I feel 
like a bug in a jar. Right That's a, a pinch, <laughs> ain't it? Really? What? What do you call a pinch? Well, see, you're like a harmony thing you got. sit down here and try to be repetitive or predictable about it. But when I get into it and sing it, no, I just, I'm, you, someone asked me, what are you doing up here? Well, that's just tonal things that's going on. You're doing brushes and strums. But you can add, see, <coughs> you get a lot of three finger in that piece too. So there's where the third finger you see, you're starting. So if you got your thumb on the right note, everything will follow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much right. Yeah, it's got the. It has to, you know, fit in a certain rhythm. So. Now I've just been informed that Andy <coughs> Barman is sick and cannot be here today. So there will be three Leroy. of us. Leroy, you're next. Come on. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Every time when I look at you, you grin. <laughs> Three finger picking. Okay. Two finger picking. That's what the workshop says. I know two three finger playing songs. camera here. It won't be good because I, I, uh, this three finger picking I don't do much. Just a couple of songs I know. <laughs> See if you can find me a cup of coffee or something to drink. Coffee black. Huh? Coffee black. Black. songs I play like it really that and uh Thank you. 
And I think that if that's about all that, that I know that three fingers stall. Over the hill with four hands. Oh, yeah. Sure. You can keep that. Okay. Well, well, sure coffee do. drinker. I appreciate that. That's a gourd man there. He's got a banjo <laughs> and a, it's a gourd and a great big old long case and he brought it in down there and we thought he had a torpedo, that big long <laughs> case he had it in. It's awful similar to what Jim was doing. Le uh -huh. Leaving with your thumb yeah, there. Yeah, because, because uh, his first finger is playing that first string. Didn't leave it, you know. Set your brush with it. Yeah. I do the same yeah. thing. And your thumb it, is playing the lead. Basically, yeah, that's one of the sounds. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can throw a, th a third finger in it. Yeah. You, want to, yeah. you want to. You've heard Will Keys play? Huge, yeah. Well, I love it when he comes down and gets his thumb on the first finger, his first finger on the fifth, and does little flips. You know, it's just mm -hmm. literally just flipping his fingers. And uh, if you're wondering what's, what he's doing with some of the tunes, it just. He calls it Appalachian and Long Thumb. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what and, now, uh, they broke the mold when they made him. Uh, Will Keys. Really great player. You can kiss that mold goodbye. <laughs> um, but see, like uh, this here, the way we're playing, there's no, um, we, we may not play the same song. Uh, twice and play it the same way, you know it. It ain't a mechanical, you know. You know what I mean? Like uh, some songs, it ain't a mechanical. Let me see if anybody's ever tried this way of 
of three finger picking. My sister calls it the lullaby lick because I use it for quiet songs that uh, aren't particularly exciting, but you want a kind of an even accompaniment. Most people, I guess, would use guitars, but I, uh, before I learned how to play a guitar, I was I was making do with making the banjo sound kind of soft. And I, I don't use the thumb string like it usually is used. I use the third string like the thumb string is used. I keep coming back to the to the middle string all the time. But in the case of this next song, it's a a, a three four time song of waltz time, and so I go. Sometimes you do find a soft song and you don't happen to have any other instrument around your playing, so you play a soft accompaniment. I've, and my, as I say, my sister calls it a little lullaby lick because I'll, uh, a quiet, simple song. But uh, uh, we get in tune. It's the bass string, the downbeat. And then I got that middle string again, and then the offbeat, main offbeat, is the other three strings, the thumb string, the top two strings, and then back to the third string. Sometimes I'll come down with a hammer on when I, at the same time. What's the last verse there? I started back home, twixt twelve and one. I cry, my God, what have I done? I'm married to the only woman I love because she would not be my bride. Then only 
Sicily. Yeah. Now, when the crowd is really singing hard, I have to wham. You get a hundred people all singing, they're not going to hear any single string work. Because I'd make a lot of noise. But I've found the lullaby lick an awful handy thing for different times and places. And as I say, it can be three, four time, or two, four time, depending on how you do it. And as you notice, sometimes I leave off with my thumb string just to get a variation. Any question? My guess is that each one of you will find some songs you particularly like, and after you've played it not for a few weeks or not for a few months, or even after a few years, but after a few decades, you think, now I really know how to play this tune. <laughs> and you get to be my age, and people say, gee, how did Grandpa get to be such a good banjo player? Is on your side. <coughs> now, young people, they got energy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I hope I have as much as what you got when I use those you if so the world's here that long. Well, I do believe there's a chance for the world to be here, and that's why I make up songs, try and encourage people not to give up. Uh, actually, that's one of my favorite finger-picking songs, and I call it Quite Early Morning. And I have to put it down lower key than I used to because my voice is in the cellar these days. Okay, are you in now? Well, it's a G position, but I'm playing an E because I got a long neck banjo. I'll slide. Keeps me moving on. This 
I've got it down three frets low. This is where a concert pitch would be. Okay. That would be G flat, B F, and this is E. And uh, it's convenient for that, if you're a singer, to sing it in the right pit key, you know. Sometimes the weavers would get in half an hour argument about whether to sing it in B flat or B natural. <laughs> Ronnie wanted to sing it lower, she's an alto. I wanted to sing it higher, but somebody else would know, find a compromise. These days, sometimes I'll sing a song in two keys. I'll sing Word Man Blues in G. If there's a good alto singer next to me, I says, you, you take over the lead. Let's change it and sing it in C. And let them lead, and I'll get the men singing bass with me. I'll sing below her, just a little bit below her. When did you write? When did that first come out? That song I sung? Yeah. About 30 years ago, middle of the Vietnam War, the beginning of the Vietnam War. Yeah. It was awful hard to feel optimistic when our country was making such big mistakes. Well, people did what they were told. I went to a festival in the Catskills about 10 years ago, and a guy came up to me after the concert. He said, Pete Seeger, I came here intending to kill you. I thought, are you joking? He says, no, not. He says, can we sing a song together? I was kind of busy. I said, could we do it later? And my wife said, Get out, you get to bench. <laughs> <laughs> and he sang, Where have all the flowers gone together? Well, he had said for 10 years, if he ever saw me, he was going to kill me. Because he'd gone off to fight in Vietnam, and there guys like me were singing peace songs. They're stabbing us in the back. We were about to get killed, and they're, they're stabbing us in the back back there. And uh, I found he came from a small town. Nobody in his small town tried to get out of the draft. They all went, it was their duty, support your country when your country is in trouble. And they all went off. And there are a bunch of other people I found, when they were over there fighting, other people said, stop the war, stop the war. And uh, when they came, those who came home were looked down on. And they, it, it just made horrible conflicts for them. But he heard me sing a whole program. I was singing for a gang of young people as well as older people. It was, a, it was a reunion for a camp, summer camp up there in the Catskills. And he was a local guy from a very small little town. And he heard all the kids singing, and they were singing, This Land is Your Land, and singing a whole lot of other songs about American history, the Erie Canal, and so on. And he realized we didn't hate our country. We just wanted our country to take a different tack. We thought it was screwy to go off and have to invade Vietnam. 
Eisenhower said, we need that tungsten. Well, we could have bought it. They would have been glad to sell it to us. They said, oh, those communists, you can't trust them. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but uh, I, uh, I hope I never give up on this country, no matter what mistakes we make. Right now, I think we're making a lot of mistakes still. I think everybody deserves a job. And then when I hear that the uh, Fed, Federal Reserve Board is raising the interest rate so uh, we reduce the inflation, but they don't care about a lot of people being thrown out of work. They don't seem to care. Greenspan's got a job, good paying job. But we know we have to have some unemployment or, or there'll be inflation. There must be some other cure for inflation besides unemployment. But there's, I, sung, I sing in schools a lot, and I sing to kids in high school, and boy, are they turned off. I've never seen a gang, a generation of Americans so turned off as Amer kids in high school today. They clam up. I ask them a question. I say, why doesn't anybody answer? I finally found out from one, well, you try and open your trap, you get shot down. At first, I thought he meant get shot down the teachers. Don't get shot down his, with, by his peers. Hey, don't be a sucker. Keep your mouth closed. When you got out of school, you'll find a way to get some money. All I know is I'm, I'm, I ain't as optimistic as I used to be. Let's get back to some more cheerful. You know, I heard that so strong about. Uncle Dave, I wonder if you ever heard it. He was the, in the last few years of his life, he was backstage at the Grand Ole Opry and Earl Scruggs just finished playing something. Somebody said, Dave, isn't that great banjo picking? Dave said, he ain't a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs>